his code is sent to penetrate and to activate the heart of femininity and he who loves the essence of she encoded in the I and I and so it be birthed into the Quatamani first Genesis family tree. The base root and foundation of the Quatamani first Genesis tribe is holistic living fuel consumption. Raw living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nut. Plant fuel. That's what we're talking about. Oh my goodness. Uh, 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 uh. I'm about to enjoy this. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is one of my sacred doctrines. She's one of those souls born in that 1999 spirit of time. Three was said to come forward. One for the brain, one for the body, and one for the spiritual time of this last phase of the triple nine. Here, baby, I want to eat this so <laughs> sincerely. But what I'm going to do is finish this presentation because it is being called for by the sacred ancestors. And I know you know what I'm speaking about. Nitty Gritty 9.7 with High Priest Quatamani, Supreme Soothsayer, Soul Seer, Spiritual Healer, and Revealer, Chief Elder of the Quatamani First Genesis Tribe. The oldest, longest sustained, purely plant fuel consuming family community order known over half a century and still going strong. We got some serious issues to deal with. If we have any possibility, of resurrecting from this toxic decay. We're going to have to address certain circumstances that has manifested as a result of the divided and conquered state man, he, and she now find his and her being in. We have to really come to comprehend that actually the situation has become so severe that man, he, and she really are not able to synchronize with each other anymore. But then that's part of the toxic parallel. That's part of the warlike culture. That's part of a syndrome, the invasion syndrome that has manifested. You take note. Just take note. There are certain populations from certain areas of the planet who had certain kind of harsh and cruel circumstances that actually caused a divisive and conquered state to manifest among them creating what is called the alpha male syndrome. And in that alpha male syndrome, it is really, really not about family community order anymore. Certainly not about divine socioeconomic family community order. What it is about, as I've said time and time again, is elevating one's self to a deified nature where all those who are under them will look upon them as the Almighty. And if that happens, somewhere within that consciousness of that being, the person feels glorified, regardless of the circumstances that manifest upon the offspring and vibrations. As a matter of fact, there's really no concern per se about the happenings of that offspring and vibration. We have the renegade mindset. We have that mindset, the predatorial mindset. Listen to all these words and see how they tie together. We have that mindset that actually ignores anything except one's personal agenda. If we take note what occurred, and for example, the glorious and magnificent presence of ancient Kemet, we can actually see this in the Indus Valley as well. What you notice is that there were nomads who was roaming the earth, seeking and searching to find something to fill one's belly or one's personal satisfaction based on an agenda of a mindset lost and astray. We're going to take a few minutes. We're going to examine something. We're going to take time to see what do we mean by the predatory male. And how does that equate to a male who actually is a family man? One who's oriented toward divine socioeconomic family community. One whose focus is on safeguarding, guiding, protecting the women and the children. What happens if he's eliminated? What happens if he's no longer there? What happens with the feminine and the offsprings? Look at this for a minute. 
their father and defender of the pride has disappeared. Rival males may have killed him, but whatever the cause, his disappearance is a crisis for the pride. Without him, the little family is a magnet for marauding males. The two mothers have already detected intruders who are attacking a nearby herd of buffalo. A deep maternal instinct directs the two mothers. They must take their cubs away, far from the approaching danger. Deeper into unknown territory. One of the three nomads is on their trail. He can smell their scent. If the nomads catch up to them, they will kill the cubs. It's one of the nomad brothers. He charges again. But the mothers risk their lives to protect the cubs. Every second they stall him buys time for the cubs to get away. The mothers hold their own against him. But now, his brother arrives. The mothers have no chance against two males. But the nomad's attention has shifted. They'll settle for the giraffe kill. The cubs can wait. One of the first things that one will note about the renegade male, the predator male, is that he's certainly not about trying to plant the garden. He's not about trying to harvest the fruits of the tree of life. As a matter of fact, his personal agenda and the agenda of those who are under his domain is to seek and search, to find, take, steal, by any means necessary to conquer so that as to rule a population. And then as that predatorial alpha male becomes more dominant in his reasoning, see how to turn those populations into his servants. Predator, nomad, invader, conqueror. Genghis Khan, quote, the greatest happiness is to scatter your enemy, to drive him before you, to see his cities reduced to ashes, to see those who love him shrouded in tears, and to gather into your bosom his wives and daughters. Taken from the prophetic 12,594-year Banu cycle, encoding the consciousness of higher peace through the divine union of masculine and feminine energy, Book 3, Spiritual Analysis of Western Culture and the Reawakening of Naga Consciousness by High Priest Kwatamani. This is the scenario that's facing humanity at this particular point in time, and we got to get out of that scenario. I'm talking to the sacred few of the few of the few and any and every being who have any possibility of thinking or reasoning with common sense so as to survive, survive within the principles, morals, and values of divine order. Otherwise, all one is doing is taking a few extra minutes to waste a little bit of time to end up right back in the same scenario worse. Let this point be received. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, something missing. Been reminiscing so long, can't see something wrong. Yeah, green earth soda can bend. Rapping this rap, this who knows when. Ain't trying to offend those God fearing men who told us woman was the birth place of sin. And then, after a while, they crucified her son child, made her bend, waver and bow. Holy cow, must have been odd. She forced to worship the facade of a vengeful, jealous, monotheistic god. Spewing curse upon she as if she was the enemy. She, the, the mother, mother of humanity. humanity. Who, why, when, where would such a mentality come to be? If not from a cold, pale self, be a fat male who condemned the essence of she to elevate his false sense of supremacy. Yeah, he would address her as Lord and less I feel in high and mighty above. She unable to love her from birth and eat. If we do not take the time to handle this situation right now, what do you think will happen with the female, the women and the children? Isn't it easy to see that a child learned by example? and not by words alone. 
Isn't it easy to see that a child is a product of his and her environment? Isn't it easy to see then that unless we forward into a green earth solar conscious lifestyle where Mother Earth is secured, protected, given all that is possible to honor her presence as our glorious mother, as the place we reside, humanity, and all living things thereof, that unless we take that step, we're simply continuing a downward spiral into oblivious nothingness. I'm really, really calling upon those precious ones to recognize that we got to get up on it. We got to get serious. We got to be about this. If we're not about it, if we're not about about it, we're disconnected from the essence of life. Think of those offsprings who have to battle and end up in a situation where the entire parenting lineage has been destabilized. Think about that precious situation where the feminine in her innocence, like my daughter or many of the daughters, anyone that we're talking about, any sister, any mother, any aunt, niece, where that daughter actually feels that she is wanted, not comprehending that within this modern monotheistic macho male syndrome that she's wanted for a few moments of pleasure and no matter what is said it ends up in that downward spiral and then offsprings of that and those precious offsprings who come so innocently end up being consumed by a nature energy that opposes her existence now what we saw we saw a cat a predatory cat who were out to consume the offsprings simply because they were nomadic. They did not connect with family community order. They were those who ended up in a situation disconnected from any kind of order of family. And then growing up absent of a relationship, absent of having that emotional tie, that having that sensitivity of having that camaraderie. And as such, all of a sudden, that being becomes disconnected from any kind of emotional feelings for the life of another. The only thing that being get concerned about is his and or her personal agenda. And think of this now. The male is responsible for the guidance and protection of the family, community, order, regardless of whether that's comprehended or not. And think about how loose a predatorial male becomes, how loose a nomad, no man, no ties to nothing except getting it any way he can. And that becomes the example of what the other offspring see reason with, hear, sense, smell, and as a result of learning, by example, becomes a reproduction, a duplicate of the very same mindset. How are we expected to be able to survive through that? Unless we focus on putting every ounce of our holistic living energy into resurrecting a sense of order, a sense of communal order, a sense of family, a sense of divine, social, economic, family, community order where the women and the children can be safeguarded and the males can fulfill their natural and innate role as the guiding and protective element of the womb from which he's born. We cannot have that vibration of being unable to appreciate the fact that she is who birthed me. Got to reach her. Be she blonde, brunette, or naughty, naughty dread. Gotta get greener, solar, consciousness, encoded in her head. Got to feel her give guidance and protection to heal her from deep dark cocoa to vanilla. She's our spirit conscious sealer. Got to feel her.
Bella got the healer. Our first DJ got the reach up. Oh, that Babylon system will be just in the womb. Where she will be divine order or self deified, individualized, doom and gloom. And as a result, the feminine, she must learn to appreciate the fact that it is he, he who fertilizes her so that she can born again. It's a beautiful experience that we have on this earth. The big thing is to recognize that we're far more than just a physical presentation. And getting that dividing situation cleared up is difficult. Because if we cannot comprehend the wholeness, the soulness, the heartbeat of our existence, then we become semi-soulless, soulless, vague, empty beings, nomads, predators, seeking out ways and means to fulfill one's personal agenda above all things else. And if this continues, it actually becomes part of the feminine nature because now she has a whole different platform that she has to operate under. She's no longer guided and protected. She's out there on her own. And as a result of that, she got to find it any way she can. That's a cold-blooded nature. So she become somewhat of a nomadic female. Somewhat, because somewhere along the line, somebody jump her and hump her. And the result is offsprings coming out of her. And those offsprings coming out of her, now she got to find ways and means to safeguard those offsprings. Because it's innate. You see, this is why I say the feminine is, by her nature, communal. However, if she's left time and time again within a situation where she is without guidance or protection, she becomes a product of that environment. Whoever sets the example that allow her to connect with the needs of her existence will be the example that she will follow. Self-deified, individualized, doom and gloom. So as we speak, we seek to touch our heart and soul of humanity. Making it to overstood that we know how to submit to this insanity. There are some bad examples that can come out of that. If you have a nomadic male, you have a predatory male who somehow find ways and means to get his thing going on disrespecting her as a way of life, then that way of life becomes what she produces, disrespectful offsprings. And then when all is said and done, and then you have those who sit around, and point the finger, blame and condemn and this and that, not realizing that what goes around comes back around when you least expect it. Then all of a sudden, bang, some kind of craziness manifests out of those offsprings that affects someone who had nothing to do with that in their consciousness. But we got to realize, prophecy, ma'at decree, karma, not conspiracy. So that puts it upon all of us, especially those who care, the few of the few of the few. Get your karma right and put every ounce of your holistic living responsibility into making sure that your body temple serve the will of our soul to soul essence and the sojourn through this life experience where we are in fact physical, mental, and spiritual soul encounters. If we can comprehend that, then we can go a lot further quicker in getting this terrible mess that we're in resolved. The only way we can rise higher Divine femininity we have to inspire Consume from the fruits of the tree of life Within our sacred garden culture paradise Yes, we got to reach out Cause our nurture and energy is our first teacher We got to plant. We got to harvest. You see, we got to keep Mother Earth clean. You see, we have to make sure that the water is kept clean. One of the priestess said something to the I and I. We were talking. And she said, it is amazing what we offer our offsprings. We're talking about mass media. We're talking about the various cinema dramas 
and all the other toxic natures that reflect a lower and lesser syndrome and that those offspring become addicted to as a pathway. She said, it's very strange. You really wonder with those mothers and fathers. Then she said, but as you have pointed out, there are very few fathers around. I said, yeah, but that's not an excuse. We got brothers, uncles, we got nephews. Somebody has to step up to the plate and reflect the masculine presence. Go on with your statement. She then said, can you imagine taking your child and giving them toxic, dirty water to drink? I said, what's your point, priestess? She said, why would we give our offspring toxic fuel of thinking and reasoning to consume? I said, make your point, baby. She said, what I'm saying is this. If, in fact, we are on a cleanup campaign, how can we declare some kind of woke syndrome and still allow our offspring to consume the toxic and depleted nature of energy that put us to sleep in the first place. I said, talk, talk, talk. She said, your teachings is all that I'm putting back. And those are the teachings that have actually caused the I and I to heal. And those teachings must continue to be revealed. I said, you know, to be honest, that really touches the I and I emotionally. Although they say the feminine is emotional, at least I have enough common sense to recognize that I was born from the feminine. So I got to get some of those emotions. And so when you're feeling a lack of emotion as the masculine, you got to comprehend that you have been broken from the codes of divine order. Broken from the codes of divine union of masculine and feminine energy. Because she is the birthplace. Now, when we reason with the fact that the relationships have become so tarnished that the masculine and feminine only see each other for physical purposes, you know that we're in a down, low, dirty, blues-like state of being. And unless we can rise up from that through the offsprings, through the generation next, and through our own personal goals and objectives, that what will occur is that mothers because they are the ones who left with the burden. That's the thing. She's communal by nature. Mothers, unbeknown of she, mothers who somehow have a wanting need to be loved, to be wanted. Mothers who go through cycles where offspring after offspring after offspring is being birthed by another male. Have to realize that she has been reduced and deduced to a predatory nature of becoming a nomad female. And if she becomes a nomad female, this is the reason why she then will allow her offsprings to go back into the same old syndrome that put her to sleep in her consciousness. It becomes a scenario, a syndrome, that nobody escapes. The male, he becomes a nomadic male. Any female he see is prey. He just want to get it, whatever it is. If it looks as though she's financially stable, if it looks as though she's physically stable, if it looks as though she has extra wit, place to stay, or just, just luscious for the moment because he got a heart on. What will happen is that syndrome will then be encoded into her, her wimps, wants, and desires for being loved, for being appreciated, for being cared for, will then be exemplified to the offsprings and then they will see later, that broken relationship, and it becomes a norm that those offsprings, those generation next, just simply feel like that's just the way it is. 
that life ain't fair. And those are the situations you have to deal with. Keeps us farther and farther away from a unified bond of divine social, economic, family, community order where we love and care for each other, where there's no such thing as divorce, where once ties have been put together through those offsprings to have enough sense to realize, whoa, whoa, that's permanent within that DNA generation. And therefore, there's a tie that's beyond the mental consciousness or the physical fantasies, delusions, illusions, and dreams of another pleasureful moment. There's something greater, a bond, a sense of commitment to tie a family unit together for the next generation, not just for one's own personal whims, wants, and desire for the moment to receive some kind of fantasized pleasure syndrome. No. This is why you can actually see parents, per se, doing certain things, tattooing, smoking up, drinking up, eating all that stuff that actually make them have diabetes and sickness and affliction and other kinds of disease, then the offsprings follow that same platform, that same program. And then the parents say, you need to make a change because this is what made us sick. Sometimes they don't even go that way. They get upset and feel like, hey, let them learn the hard way. We got all kind of syndromes that go on within that toxic parallel. That's why we need to stay far, far, far away from it. This is why we come straight forward. Because we got to get right down to the, to the real nitty gritty. The real nitty gritty is you need love. We need love. Everybody needs love. But we don't even know what it means anymore. We're talking about tender love and care. We're talking about finding ways and means to provide the ample, wholesome foods to consume. We're talking about the warmth and finding ways and means to interface, interrelate with Mother Earth, wind, rain, and sun. We're talking about ways and means for communal nature to function so that we can actually produce generations of generations of generations of like-minded beings. We have already produced enough generations and generations of generations of like-minded beings within a toxic parallel that's actually taking the whole of humanity into a state of mutated, degenerated self-destruction. And we can't be about that. We have to take the challenge. Dad, I've said this, and I say it again, in many ways that's possible. Dad, I take the time to refocus, feel it inside, and bring it to you. And the only thing we have to do is realize this. We got to take action. We got to take the actions. We have to take the actions because actions speak louder than words. This is why we refuse within the Quatamani First Genesis tribe to go out talking about anything. You should do this. You should do that. We got to do this, etc. Until we first put it into practice. And this is where we have to go. Therefore, the basic principle that must go into the males is this. If you can begin to overstand that we are birthed within the wound of she, femininity. If you can then comprehend that she is communal by nature because she birthed he and she, we have a responsibility to the feminine to give her guidance and protection. Therefore, you need to shut your mouth and learn divine guidance and protection so you can give it to the next generation so they can give it to the next generation so you can keep that generational uplifting going on. It's very difficult. You know, people like the front, they can pretend in the detoxing process, but detoxing, it lets some stuff out. It ain't no joke. And you have to have guidance to it. If you do not, you don't even know which way to go. So what I tell my sons is that you all are going to have to be the primary tool to learn the principles, morals, and values 
of divine socioeconomic family community order, divine guidance and protection of the feminine, appreciating her affectionate, nurturing energy so we can go forward and multiply all of this and that into the generation next. So that puts them in a situation. Someone was saying to one of my sons, I overheard, how in the world can you be nearing 30 and you still a virgin? And I heard the son say, that's our principles. We cannot simply just take the female and begin to abuse her. There has to be a wholesome, holistic, living connection between she and any of us as the male before any indulgement can occur because we have a lifelong responsibility to her. You can imagine what that young male said to him. He said, hey, I think that you got it wrong because she's there to enjoy her pleasure. She's there to fulfill a need. And sometimes it don't work. So you got to try it out and see if it fit. He said, most of the time it don't fit. I remember hearing the voice in the head of the eye and I wanting to say, have you found something that fit yet, young man? But then didn't have to ask that because you could see the wandering male running around. He done left a child here or there and he's still nomadic. And the primary reason is because we've lost contact with what is a nomadic male. And we have to redress this. So what I've told my sons on an ongoing and continuous basis, you cannot afford to disrespect and dishonor your sacred ancestors who went through serious trials and tribulations. And I'm not talking about anybody in the DNA line. I'm talking about those who upheld the holistic living experience, the principles, morals, and values of divine order. It's only a few of them. We only have a few of the few of the few ancestors in our DNA lineage, but we have them. And therefore, you have an obligation Never to submit to the nomadic masculine consciousness, that predatorial consciousness. You cannot submit to the ego trip of being the apex male. That's nonsense. We have to recognize that our total existence is about the divine union of masculine and feminine energy. If you think anything else, it's very clear that you're about self-destruction. And we the male, we have the privilege of being born within her womb and having the rites of passage to come out of that womb to protect the womb, the next womb, the next generation of wombs that actually will birth us again and again. Soul to soul, beautiful experience, pure comprehension have to be made. And most of the parenting natures out there, I ain't trying to condemn you, that's where you are, are just concerned about their own material glut and glory at the moment, trying to find ways and means to assimilate, integrate, and adopt, trying to figure out the feminine, how she can look beautiful according to false and fake beauty standards that have nothing to do with communal order creating a, a, a distorted image of who she be. So much focus on the physical that she have little to no focus on the possibility that she's a soul to soul encounter. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen to the song, to the song. When it rains, it pour. Time to get deep into the core to see things one has been taught to ignore. The battle of the sexes, hexes, yeah. yeah. Two parts to one whole, split in two. This is how opposition grew. Instinctively, she knew what masculine energy was birthed to do. He, the provider who fertilized the seeds inside her, his is to protect and guide her. He. 
ejaculate his life energy, the essence of he for her to nurture urgently. She saw sensuous wet, stimulated she can get in the heat of the sweat. Sperm cells moving like a jet as the natural urge surge to merge with she and the mojo of her femininity, reproducing that unified intensity. This is for whomever got the ears to listen. Bring it home. 